Hey, how's it going everyone? Sambucky here. How are you guys doing? As always, hope you guys are doing well. Welcome to another video. This video is going to be a little bit different than what I'm usually done uh, on this channel. This is going to be a Game of Thrones theory uh, video. Uh, one of the theories I think is going to come true in Season 8, whenever that happens. It's such a long, uh, long time away until we see Season 8. Uh, but I, have a th I do have a theory as to what I think will happen. And it does pertain to the Night King. Now, obviously, there are going to be spoilers in this video. So if you guys aren't 100% caught up through the finale, uh, go watch everything. Make yourself caught up and then come back to this video so you guys know exactly what's going on. And so, obviously, I don't ruin everything for you. Um, now, just a little disclaimer. As far as I know, um, this is my theory. Um, I don't think anyone out there has this theory. There are uh, theories similar to this, um, but I've added a lot to it and kind of twisted and changed it a little bit. So as far as I can tell, I'm the only one with this uh, exact theory. Um, but if you guys do know of someone who's maybe they made another video out there or, you know, it's you know some other website or whatever where someone has this, please let me know. Put that in the comment section. And I'll have an annotation on the screen as well as that same link in the description uh, to that person and to the video or whatever uh, to give them credit for it. Last thing I want to do is take credit for someone else's theory. Um, but again, as far as I've researched and as far as I've seen, I'm the only one with this uh, exact theory. And so uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it. Uh, this is my Game of Thrones theory as to why I believe Bran is the Night King. Now, before we get into the actual theory itself, one thing I want to note is Novikov's self-consistency principle. Um, this is actually something I've seen uh, on Reddit, someone pointing out that they believe this is the time theory or time principle that Game of Thrones uses. And it's basically the principle that says that if there's any event uh, that exists that would cause a paradox or any change uh, whatsoever, um, then the probability of that event happening is zero. So basically, it's impossible to create a time paradox. Uh, I think that this could also mean that if there ever were to be an event uh, in the future, like traveling back in time and changing the past, the timeline that we are currently experiencing is already the result of that event happening. So for example, say we're in a different timeline and someone in the future made a time machine, went back in the past, uh, dressed themselves up and called themselves John Wilkes Booth and went and shot Abraham Lincoln, then the timeline that we're currently living is that having already happened, as you can easily just go online, Google it, and you'll see exactly, you know, that this happened already. So the event that, the timeline that we're li living right now is uh, the timeline in which that event already happened. So now for the actual theory that Bran is the Night King. I think Bran becomes the Night King when he goes into the past to try to prevent the Night King from ever being created or from ever happening. Now, as we've seen with Hodor and uh, the scene uh, with his dad outside of John's uh, birth, um, outside of the tower where John was born, when Bran goes back in time, he's unable to physically affect it. But uh, again, as we've seen with Hodor, the whole hold the door uh, voice and vibrations were felt uh, directly into Hodor, and that obviously caused him to become Hodor. Right, so we see already that a future event went back in time and affected the past from happening and the rest of that timeline that we experienced was the result of that event already of it being happened. Right, and so again that proves that Bran himself cannot physically affect the past but some way through voice or the vibrations being felt he can affect it. And so um, when he goes back in time and he sees uh, the Night King from being created, he tries to work into that human male uh, who becomes a Night King and maybe tries to fight his way out of it in order to, to prevent it from ever happening. But, as we've seen already with the Vision, uh, when the Children of the Forest put that magical dagger into him, that essentially traps Bran in that human's body. Right? That type of magic prevents him from ever being able to leave it. And so Bran therefore becomes uh, the Night King. So there are a couple different instances uh, as to why he would act as the Night King from that point forward. Uh, one of which is that over time he sees how people were being treated. And he sees uh, you know, all the different wars that humans have created. All the different fights that were happening. And decides to say, you know what, this just can't carry on. There's just so much evil in this world 
that I will just destroy everything and just end this evil. Uh, and just end everything from ever being happening. Or the second is that he notices that the children of the forest and the humans came together and united in trying to stop the Night King. So if Bran is still in there and is still, you know, self-conscious about what's going on, then uh, he could try to become that centralized symbol of hatred and evil that causes the rest of the kingdom and the realm to unite together for the first time to try and stop that evil. And so there are really, there are three pieces of information uh, that I've seen that I believe support this claim, and they are as follows. One, when Bran first met the Third-Eyed Raven, he had a vision in which he was walking through the undead and up to the Night King. Now, the undead never reacted to him. The generals that were with the Night King never reacted to him. So this shows that this is a sort of vision uh, that he's not physically there, right? Otherwise, the undead and the generals would have just jumped on him and tried to kill him, which we didn't see because they could not see him. However, when he goes up to the Night King, we see that this isn't a simple vision because the Night King was not only able to recognize and see Bran, he was able to actually touch and mark Bran. So this shows that there has to be some sort of link between the two as there's really no other way the Night King could have just affected and been in that vision and affected Bran in such a way. There has to be some sort of link between Bran and the Night King that would allow for this to happen. And I believe that link is the fact that Bran is the Night King. Right, that in the past he became the Night King and so he has the same powers. And obviously when Bran goes into that sort of vision, the Night King can also enter that vision and see Bran and affect him exactly what we saw. The second reason and the second, uh, I guess, instance or piece of information is that this season we saw Bran warg into a raven and fly north of the wall. Now somehow not only did the Night King know and sense of it, he was able to dispel Bran from that raven. Again, another instance of there being a link between the two. As no one else reacted, I don't think anyone else, even with warging powers, would have been able to detect and know that Bran is there in a group, in a random group of ravens or crows, right? There's really no other way that would have been able to happen if he did not share that same ability and know that it's happening, right? And the third and lastly, and this is the most definitive. Uh, proof for me that the Night King is in fact Bran is that the Night King was able to capture a dragon to begin with right now in the books and in the show they've noted that the wall is encased with magic that prevents the undead and the Night King and the White Walkers from being able to get close to it now if you guys go back a season or two and you remember when Bran first met the Third-Eyed Raven they're in a cave that prevents the undead and the Night King from entering it. The only reason they were able to enter it from the first place is because the Night King was able to mark Bran and dispel that magic, right? But this same type of magic exists on the wall and was never dispelled. So what would be the Night King's game plan in order to get past the wall without a dragon, right? We have no reason to believe he would have been able to get past it otherwise, right? As we've seen, the undead can't swim. Right? So there's no way that the, the entire 100,000 army of the undead could simply jump into the water and just swim across. Right? They would never be able to make it. And because of the magic, there's no way they can just run up to it and start banging on the wall or somehow going through it. The only way they're getting past the wall is to go under it, through it, or over it. But again, what is the Night King's game plan in order to get past the wall? With Bran currently with his all-seeing and all-knowing powers, he knows that Daenerys rode her dragons over the wall to save Jon. So he already knows that there is a way for the dragons to get past and to get over there. Now, if you guys look at that whole scene of, of uh, Jon and his group with Tormund and the Hound and everyone. Um, capturing and getting essentially trapped uh, by the Night King. Uh, I personally do believe that this was an overall trap by the Night King because he's Bran and he knows the dragons are coming, right? Why else would a random general with just a handful of undead just be randomly strolling um, north of the wall like this without the rest of the group? Because I believe that this was a trap. They purposely went out there knowing that Jon is going to come with his group and the Night King and the rest of his army came right from behind and forced them onto that lake. 
and essentially just surround the lake and force them to be there. Knowing that the only way they're getting out of that situation is to either die and be killed by the undead or for Danny to come and save them with dragons. This is a perfect trap set by the Night King in order for the dragons to come and save them. And he already knows this happening because Bran saw this happening in the future. And so he set up this trap in order to do so, in order to capture the dragon. Now, again, as we saw in the scene, she comes with her three dragons and the Night King very effortlessly was able to kill Viserion. Now, again, a lot of people I've seen online, on Facebook, on Twitter, were having problems saying, you know, why, why is there just a random um, chain that the Night King was just dragging around? Well, if he knows that this is happening, then obviously you'll take precautions. You'll, you know, wherever at some point you may, might have come across a ship or you might have come across something with chains. And you'll just take those chains and just drag it with you, knowing that the time will come where you'll need that to bring Viserion up from the bottom of this lake. And there you go. Now he has a dragon and that becomes his game plan in order to get past the wall. Right. And so, you know, kill the dragon, revive it, use the dragon who's unaffected by the magic to destroy the wall, dispel that magic. And there you go. You would suddenly have a huge gap in the wall where the Night King, his generals and the rest of the hundred thousand undead can just come through. Right? So that's, you know, it's definitely a little bit of a stretch, but I believe that those three key reasons that I've developed are the, uh, are compelling enough to show that this can happen. Right? Now, again, this does follow Novikov's self-consistency principle that if something were to happen to, you know, affect the, the, the past, it already would have happened to prevent there from being any type of paradigms. Um, and so that would be, you know, Bran going back and becoming the Night King, you know, and the timeline that we're living has that already having happened we might not have seen it happen and we probably won't see it happen until season eight but again the fact that it happened remains to be true as far as i believe um and again with these three reasons that uh the night king has some sort of link to bran and able to see him uh in those visions and not only just see him but touch him physically in a vision and the fact that he knows when bran has warged into a raven and to dispel him from that uh, again shows that there has to be there has to be some sort of link between the two and finally the fact that the Night King set a trap for a dragon he has to know what's coming and Bran with his all-knowing and seeing powers saw it happening you know in the future when he goes back in time to become the Night King he already knows that it happens so you're easily able to set up a trap and boom there's your dragon there's your game plan to get past the wall and there you have it you know that's that's my theory to as to why I believe Bran becomes the Night King um, again, as far as I know, uh, this is, uh, solely my theory. Uh, if you, you know, if on YouTube or somewhere else, you've seen someone with this theory already, please let me know. The last thing I want to do is to take credit for someone else's theory in this community. Uh, this Game of Thrones community is one of the best communities. And so the last thing I'd want to do is to do, uh, something like that is to take credit for someone else's, uh, hard work. So again, that's, that's my theory. Uh, and in the comment section down below, let me know if you guys agree with this. Why do you agree with this? If you disagree, why do you disagree? Is there some sort of reason? Is there some sort of proof you might, uh, you think you have as to why this just seems extremely implausible? Um, or if you do agree with me, maybe you have some other reason as to why you can add on to this as to why this happens. You know, let's try and start a conversation. You know, with the Game of Thrones community, uh, and we have so long until season eight comes out, you know, this could be something to kind of pass the time. Let's, you know, add to this. Let's try and make this a, a, a legit theory and it would be completely awesome to see this happen in Season 8 uh, whenever it comes. So again, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and you guys enjoyed my theory as to why Bran becomes the Night King. Uh, again, I'm looking forward to reading your comments in the uh, comment section. Again, let me know if someone else already has this theory. I'll you know definitely be sure to put an annotation uh, and put their link in the description to give them... You know, the credit that it is due. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to drop a like and subscribe if you guys are new and you like my video and my content. And I'll catch you guys in my next video. Until then, take it easy, everybody. Catch you guys next time. Peace.